Good morning. We are into the uh, Unit 3 add-on pack for the first day today, looking at graphing radical functions. Now, we've done some graphing in several places here. So earlier, a little bit back further, we learned that this absolute value, like absolute value, I thought we're doing radical functions. Just to make a comparison here, when we look at our shifts, when we were doing absolute value, this was always my left and my right, but that minus was an opposite. So even though we would normally think that left would be minus and right would be plus, that's how it works on a number line, it's the exact opposite when we're looking at the shift there. And when we look at the shift outside the absolute value, that's up and down. So if the question was, hey, what are the two shifts, what are the two transformations for this particular equation, the answer would be right two and down three. Similarly, the graph of our radical function works the same way. Now, I'm not going to write it all back in again. It's the same thing. But here is my graph of my mother function. Be careful when you say that. That can come across the wrong way. And here's the actual answer. So if you look, like for instance, when your mother function, your parent graph, starts at 0, 0. If I go right 2 and down 3, that's where this graph ends up. Okay. If I start at my next point and I go right 2 and down 3, I end up at that next point. So I kind of have a little bit of a clue before I even start of what these things are going to look like. So again, when you're asked what are transformations of something, what are shifts of each function, we're just going back to something we already know about. Whether it's absolute value functions, whether it's parabolas with our quadratics, same idea. So, I mean, basically, it's just, okay, I'm going right one, and I'm going up two. Okay. I'm going left three. And down four. But there's an added little bonus here on number two. When there are values in front, now that's like being a negative one that's there. Okay? A couple of things can go on. In this case, if it's negative, let's look at something for a second. Let's, let's visualize. So negative, not minus. Second x squared to get our square root. I do not need to know about Java updates. And then make sure you right arrow to get out of your radical. And I want you to notice it's not opening upward anymore. Now it's opening downward. So here's how we want to signify that. We don't just want to say flip. We don't want to say open down. We want to say this reflects about the x-axis. Because what's happened with that negative is when I look at the graph of it, okay, versus let's say I redid that and I just wrote it without the negative. So x plus 3, right arrow, minus 4, and I graphed it. Okay, this one moved down and left, like I have here, but it still opened upward. This one is opening down. It's flipped. It's reflected. Okay, that's what the negative does. So if there's a negative in front, that's going to be a reflection. Okay, but what about, okay, I do all my normal here. I'm like, okay, left four, up three. Now that one's not negative, so does it reflect? No. No, it doesn't. If there's a number there, okay, that's going to be a stretch. So again, Let's take a peek here. So I'm going to put, the first time, I'm not going to put the 5 in. I just want to look and see what would this look like if I just had this. So I graph this. Normal graph, it shifted left and up. Okay. But what if I put in that coefficient, that 5 in front? What's going to happen to my graph? 
So I look at this one, whoa, it like stretches way off the screen. And notice it's got a lot more of a slope or a stretch to it. If I look at the values here, let me get to where we're. So it stretches those initial values that we had before are really getting getting stretched now much greater. Okay. So you'll notice on all my values over here, it's increasing them by five. So three, four, five increases by one. Three to eight is five, eight to 13 is five, and that would keep stretching. So if there's a number in front, it's a stretch. Can you have a stretch and a reflect? Sure. If this was negative five, would it be stretch five, reflect about the axis? Yes. That's why you keep these notes and things close when you're doing things. So you've got those references to work with here. We're teaching you how to be a, a good user of study tools that you've got. So, okay, enough with the shifting for now. So basic graphs. I was talking about this thing that's called parent or mother function. I'm going to call it a parent function because mother function is way too close to some other things here. Um, so let's just graph these in their norm here. So again, calculator still can download them. Just saying over on the site there. So square root of x. Graph. All right, there it goes. Here's what we want to lock in on. Now, again, those errors just all mean, hey, it's undefined over there. We haven't gotten into, we, we've gotten into I at this point, but we can't graph I. So that's where all the I values would be. So I've got 0, 0. I've got 1, 1. And I'm just interested in the whole numbers. I'm not interested in the decimals because there's going to be a pattern that helps us here. So those are the four points within up to 10 here on my graph that I can fit. Now, there's actually a pattern to those two. Okay, whenever you have the square root of x, your parent function, your parent graph, it's going to be these same four numbers for square root of x, but check it out. Look at just the x values for a minute. Those numbers look familiar what type of numbers they are. Yeah, they're all perfect squares. And these are just the square roots of them. And so these values, I can just shift my values around if I want to, or I can use the calculator. Whenever we're doing these, my domain, and I'm going to use the chart to help me a little bit here. My domain is going to start at whatever x value is right after the error messages, OK? So my domain is going to start at zero, and it goes forever to the right, because domain is still x values, like it always has been, and it's still left to right. My range is the exact same idea. It's my y values from bottom to top. Well, the bottom is that same point. It's the y value right after the error, if we're using our calculator. And it is slowly but surely moving up forever. Now, will those move when my function gets moved like it did with the transformations up above? Sure, we're going to talk about that. But that's just some basics here. Now, when we get here, now, is there a way to put a cubed root in the calculator? Yes. Is it more button presses that I think you don't really need? Yes. So here's what I would suggest doing instead. Here's what I do. I go back to my old turning a radical into an exponent, one third. That's what I like to type in my calculator. That's what I like doing. Again, it, it, you can do you, but I like keeping life simple. So x to the one third. It's going to look like a snake going through here. Here it goes. Wiggle. There we go. Okay, this is what our cube roots look like. So I have to pay attention. Is there a little number there or not? If I pull my chart, looking for numbers this time, so I see negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0. We get more numbers this time. Again, anything between negative 10 and 10 that I can get a value, 8 and 2. And you're never going to guess. You're never going to guess. Special numbers again. Not squares this time. Cubes. Every perfect cube 
because cubes can be positive or negative. I still can get an answer out. And we get those. So, oops, not there. Negative 8, 1, 0, 1, 8, 2. Okay, there's my snake. Here's the cool thing about cube groups. Domain and range, we don't even have to think about it. You're like, why don't we have to think about it? Forever left, forever right. Now, it's, it's very, very small, but forever down, forever up. Always. Cubes, always. It doesn't matter if you shift them, if you stretched them, if you reflected them, doesn't matter. That's the domain and range for cubes. Easiest question you'll ever run into. All right. So what if we start messing with stuff? Okay, what, what can we do here? So first thing, always the best move. Write down your transformations. Write down your shifts first. Okay. So for this one, we'd be going left five and down two. And I'm going to show you two ways you can go after this. Two ways. So here's the first way we can tackle. We could just go to the calculator. It's an option. Okay, I told you I was going to show you all of them. So always remember again that minus two is not under the radical. So I have to move myself. There we go. Right arrow so that minus two doesn't get stuck under there as well. I'm going to graph, and I noticed it moved left and down. Okay. Just like we did before, we're going to pull our chart, and we're going to look for those whole number answers. So we see negative 5, negative 2. We see negative 4, negative 1. We see negative 1, 0. Do we get any more? Oh, we got one more. 4, 1. And that covers us. Okay, here's the deal though. You're like, so I just got to do that. Yes. If you don't want to mess with the calculator, I, I don't like messing with the calculator. Here's something else you can do. You remember that parent graph we were talking about a minute ago? I'm just going to plot that in a different color. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Check this out. Okay, my shifts, left five, and down two. There's my first point. Left five, and down two. Three, four, five, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. I don't even need the calculator. I just plot my original parent points, and then just do the shifts, and I'm done. They both work. That's, that's, the, that's the deal here. So... Whichever one you're more comfortable with is fine. Okay, they both get us the right answer, so that's what's important. I'm not really worried about the good points. Okay, the calculator is going to tell me what the good points are. I'm, if I go that route, shoot, might as well just use my chart. So my domain. Okay, now here's one place that we can kind of compare and contrast as well. If I just look at my graph, okay, and I go, okay, domain is X, left to right. Here's my furthest point left right here. If I go back to the x-axis, it starts at negative 5, and it goes forever to the right. Remember the clue we have if we use the calculator. Whatever, after the error messages are done, that first x and y value right after is where your domain and range are going to start. So the domain started at negative 5. My range, again, that's the lowest point as well, but I'm coming back to the y-axis at negative two, and it's still slowly working its way up forever. But again, there's the answer for me, giving me the values that I need. So you have options, okay? So let's, let's try this. Let's see here, on number two, gotta move me out of the way again. Man, I'm good at getting in the way everywhere on these. Again, if we're gonna go to the calculator, I am a fan of using the one-third power. Oh, doesn't help if I don't have a parenthesis there, though, does it? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, notice I'm still up here. That plus one is not under the radical. Okay, not in my parentheses in this case. So I hit right arrow, 
to get that out of there and then put the plus one. And here's going to come my snake. It's, it's shifted a little bit. It's not going through the origin anymore. Why? Well, because of my transformations, which are left two and up one. Left two and up one. I can see where the middle of my snake is and get that. So I'm like, okay. So when I go to find my points, negative 10, negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 2. I think I'm going to get one more. There it is, 6, 3. Again, we still want to be accurate with these. We don't just want to scribble some crazy sketch that makes no difference whatsoever. But again, just like we did on the other one. If you don't like messing with the calculator, I don't like doing the one-third. Okay, here's your other option. If you remember your parent point, or use your one from your graph, and again, left two, up one, left two, up one, left two, up one, left two, up one. All you would take is your original five parent points and shift them. Same thing. But even when I shifted, and I said this on the other side, these are never changing. Infinite. Done. Good. Okay. All right. Now, now it gets a little more interesting. Now it gets a little more interesting. Okay. Shifts first. Left one, opposite of what I think. Up three. But this time we've got the reflect. Reflect about x-axis. And I have people ask me, can I just put reflect? Well, no, because you can reflect about the y-axis. You can reflect about the line y equals x. All these other things. So, no, you have to be specific. Okay? We're flipping down. That's how we say flip down in math lingo. So, again, let's, let's kind of look at this from a couple different formats. So, negative square root of x plus 1, arrow to the right, plus 3. Okay? So, I notice left up, okay, flipped, okay, so I start using my points. I'm like, okay, so negative 1, 3, 0, 2, and 3, 1, do I get any more, and 8, 0, okay. Perfectly fine for you to do it this way, okay. What if you were doing your parent point? Okay. If you're parent pointing, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Okay. We still went left 1 and up 3. Okay. But you're like, Hardy, if I did that on the next one, left 1 and up 3, what happened? That reflection, okay, it's almost like you have to take your point and start down here. So like this one start here. If I start here, I go left 1 and up 3. Okay, or this one was two above the x-axis. When it reflects, it's two below, left one and up three. This one started three above, left one and up three. It's trickier. It's, it's trickier for sure with the negative. So I don't blame you if you go to the calculator on this one. I, I, I don't at all. I would consider it myself, but I, I want to be able to let you see all the ways. There's my first values right after the error message. So that, once I get me out of the way, is going to be my domain. Ooh, now be careful. Left to right, left to right, negative one over. Be careful though on your y. It's not gonna be three to infinity. You're like, well, why not? Remember, range is bottom to top. The bottom, this one it opens down, is going down forever. Ooh. But it's going up to that, oops, not negative three up to that three. So if it reflects down, you've got to keep, that's the one thing we got to keep an eye on out of all of these. Okay, if you get a reflect about the x-axis, it's going to flip your range around, but not the value. All right, one to go. Again, I, I can't say it often enough. Keep these close when you're doing these assignments and stuff because it is going to make your life much easier. Okay. If we're not using the cubed root, whoop, glare. 
we're going to want to type it in this way. So there's my two. Here is my cube root of x. Okay, so the minus 4 doesn't get in there. The 2 doesn't stay in the parentheses. The only thing that's being cube rooted is the x. So I see my graph. Here comes my stake. Now this is, whoo, this one's stretched this time. Ugh. All right, let's see what we got for some points here. Negative 8, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 6. 0, negative 4. 1, negative 2. You notice how the numbers are not real close to each other this time? They're really stretchy. Like most of our snakes have just been kind of slither, and this one's like spreading out. Get ready for a snooze or something. Transformations. Okay, two of them this time. Be careful. The minus 4 is not under the radical. That is not right 4. It's down 4. And we stretched by a factor of 2. But domain and range haven't changed. So that time I shifted it, I changed it, didn't matter. And we rock and roll. Okay? All right. That is that is it for today with this. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Okay? We can roll through some stuff, but keep this stuff out when you're working on stuff. Okay? The tools are there to help you, not just to waste your time. So have a good day.